mathematicians? I am excited to work today's math problem with you. So let's go ahead and pop right in to work on making sense of our problem. So the first time I read it, I'm just going to read it all the way through. And then the second time, we're really going to break down the problem sentence by sentence. So follow along as I read it. Malachi has 231 crayons. Lauren has 78 less crayons than Malachi. How many crayons does Lauren have? So this is what we call a comparative problem because we are comparing two things. We're comparing the amount of crayons that Malachi has to the amount of crayons that Lauren has. So listen, comparative problems can be really tricky. So I'm going to teach you a strategy that's really simple that you can use if you come across a problem or you read it and you just think, I don't really understand what's going on. So here's the strategy. Sometimes when you have really big numbers like this, it's really tricky to imagine the problem. Like if I told you to imagine 231 crayons, you probably couldn't really imagine that many crayons because it would just look like a mound of crayons. But if I told you to imagine seven crayons, you could probably imagine seven crayons. So here's what the strategy is, is to change the numbers so that the numbers are within 10. However, you do need to pay attention to which number is bigger. So you can see Malachi has the larger number. So when I change my problem, I'm going to make sure that Malachi still has more crayons than Lauren. So watch. And we're still going to solve this with the big numbers in a minute. So I am going to go ahead and make a note over here that I have Malachi is at 231 and that my other number was 78. I'll add my label in a second. So I'm going to erase these numbers and I'm going to put smaller numbers in their place. And I think that you're going to figure, see that figuring this out is a lot easier when your numbers are smaller. So like I said a second ago, I'll give Malachi seven. I gave you that number. Malachi has seven crayons. Lauren has three less crayons than Malachi. How many crayons does Lauren have? When I made those numbers smaller, was it easier for you to picture what was going on in this story? So let's go ahead and write a number, a math equation that matches it. So my first sentence says, Malachi has seven crayons. So I'm gonna write the number, and I'll kind of show a break from my numbers over here, but I have seven, and I'm gonna say that these are M's crayons, Malachi's crayons, that's my first sentence. Let's look at our next sentence. Lauren has three less crayons than Malachi. So if she has three less, is that adding or subtracting? That's subtracting. That would be minus three. And I'm not labeling my three as Lauren's crayons, because it didn't say Lauren had three crayons. It said Lauren had three less than Malachi. So let's look at our question. Our question says, how many crayons does Lauren have? That is my box. 
My question mark is, I'm going to say L for Lauren, Lauren's crayons. Could you guys use mental math to figure this out? With these numbers, how many crayons does Lauren have? She has four crayons. So listen, when I made my number smaller, did it make this story so much easier to visualize? So listen, if you ever come across a problem and you just think, this is so confusing, I'm having a hard time picture it. If you give it smaller numbers, it makes it so much easier to figure out. You just have to make sure that you always put your bigger number in the same spot and your smaller number in the same spot. So now that we, I'm gonna go back and I'll just go ahead and rewrite my other numbers in here. This is gonna make it easier to make sense. Originally, Malachi, we said, had 231 crayons and that Lauren has 78 less than Malachi. So now that I'm still looking for Lauren's crayons, I'm gonna use the same math equation with different numbers. So I'll kind of put a little box around this and we are going to be solving 231 minus 78 equals Lauren's crayons. So today we are going to be looking at a number line strategy. Follow along with me. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at the number that I'm subtracting from 231 and that's the number I'm going to put on my number line. So my 231 is going to go right here. And to keep track of my work, I will underline my 231. So there are lots of different ways that you could subtract your 78. But one thing that you can do is to go in chunks and to think strategically about my chunks. I'm going to look at what is in my tens place. There is a three in my tens place, which is 30. So if I went on my number line and I were to say minus 30, do you know what 231 minus 30 is? Hmm. Can you look in your tens place? It is 201. So I'm going to go over here to my 70 and show that that's where I got my 30 from. But look, have we subtracted 70 yet? No, we've only subtracted 30. How much more do we have to subtract? 40. So I'm going to show that I also have my 40 and my 70. So here's the thing. Once you get over here to 201, you might say to yourself, I don't know that I can subtract 40 in my head from 201. So you know what you could do? Switch over to counting by tens. So because we're subtracting 40, that's going to be four tens. Let's go to 201. Think in your think tank. 201 minus 10. Hmm, it's tricky when you're at that 100 is 191. So we're going to subtract another 10. 191 minus 10 is, think, look at your tens place. If you're subtracting 10, that's 181. We're going to go again, 181 minus 10. Hmm, do you see the pattern? 171, 
And remember, we're subtracting four tens, so I have one more 10 to subtract, and I'm gonna subtract 10 again. 171 minus 10 is 161. So look, we have subtracted our 70 in the form of 30 and four tens, which means that the last thing we have to subtract is eight ones. So if I look over here, I might try to get to a close friendly number next. If I'm at 161, I'm gonna be breaking up my eight over here into a one and a seven. So if I'm at 161, what is 161 minus one? 160. So now that you're at 160, you just need to subtract your seven. And this step right here might be the hardest step. So if you're having a hard time thinking 160 minus seven, think what's 10 minus seven? 10 minus seven is three. So that's gonna help me out over here to know that 160 minus seven is 153. Man, this was a challenging word problem and this strategy really stretches your thinking, okay? Thanks mathematicians for stretching your brains with me today. Bye.